Okay, today we're going to make a simple hammered ring. I'll take you through it one step at a time, beginning to end. And you can turn something that looks like this into this. It's got the person's name written on the band there because I gotta make a few of them. Well, yeah, we'll take a 64 Kennedy or any coin really, and you can do this. First thing you want to do is get a little soldering block and you want to anneal the coin. See the coin will start to turn color. Do not overheat it, or the surface will bubble and you'll just be left with a mess. So, right about there is where you want it. A nice dull red. Give it just a bit more. Okay, now we'll just take a pair of needle nose pliers and we'll dunk it into water. Okay, now the coin is annealed. So by annealing, you'll soften the coin, soften the edges so that we can work this edge here. So that's how you anneal it, that's how you get set up. The other thing you're gonna need is a small two to three ounce hammer. A little tack hammer you can pick up at the hardware store, and it's really simple. We'll lay the coin out like that. We'll just put a simple little dot on it so that we know where we're starting and ending. And then you're going to take your coin, put it up on edge, nice and square, 90 degrees, not this way, not this way, or you'll run into problems. So... That's really simple. All we got to do is just start tapping very lightly and let the coin rotate down. Try to keep your hammering consistent. Okay, we're going to flip the coin around, we're back at our orientation site there. So we'll flip it around and we'll go the other way. You know, it's twice we've gone around and you can see we've already started to build up this edge right here we're going to start building this up right here this fine edge and that's only twice around so and to carry on and then you just keep carrying on Typically, you want to go around the coin about four times. So this is number three. Flip it around.
flip it around one more time. And you'll be able to, when you're hitting it around on about the fourth or fifth rotation, you're going to start to notice the coin, the metal is a lot harder. And that's because silver will work hard. See, that's only four times around and we're getting a nice edge built up on there already. The reading is starting to flatten out. In there now you can kind of now we can focus on it a bit but there we are and eventually get that all hammered down and the more you hammer it the wider this will get right here basically what's happening is you're pounding the silver right through the center and these edges will slowly build themselves out on either side so that's why you want to turn the coin. Every time you go around, you want to turn it. Otherwise, you'll end up making a cone and drawing all the silver to one side. And we'll anneal one more time here. Remember, do not get it too hot. Just a nice dull red. If you get it too hot, the inside of the, the surface of the coin will bubble. It's called reticulation. And then as you hammer the coin down, it'll just start chipping and flaking. Again in the water. Drop it on the floor. See, and we are. See, I've gone ahead and worked on it a little bit. I've only gone around it a couple more times, but that plant, this edge will build itself out really quickly. Let's carry on. This is just so we know where to stop and start. Small hammer, 90, uh, 90 degrees up and down, not this way or this way. And nice light taps as you rotate. again and as you're hammering it's very important that you keep this coin straight up and down Because if you and if you start hitting it too hard or get too many bad hits, the coin will actually start to look like a Pringle. It'll take a saddle. It'll get a saddle going on it, and then it'll be all warbly. But that's an easy fix too. If your coin does start to twist or take on a twist, just take a wooden block of some kind, a hardwood wooden block, put it over top, get a bigger hammer, smack it turn it, 
same thing. And your ring will be straight again and you can carry on. Okay, let's go around one more time here. And you can see the edge has gotten quite a bit wider just with that just with those few rotations you can see the flange is building but just keep going around and around and around and around this thing keep flip keep turning it keep going around and around till you get about to the size about roughly the size you're going to make it or you want it and then we'll get to cleaning out the center and sizing it up properly okay i've gone ahead and annealed this one more time and then dunked it in the pick in a pickling solution if you guys want to make a pickling solution it's really simple just go to the hardware store pick up some ph down pool chemicals I got a video on how to mix it all up there. Just go and check that out. But this just turns the coin nice and white. But we're ready to carry on hammering. So we'll make a mark. It across the top there. chair situated and we'll go around one more time see if you can see here every time you Give it a hammer hit it just kind of polishes the silver a bit and you can see exactly where you're hitting all the way around you don't have to use a pickling solution but it is a good way to get rid of that black that was on there if you guys remember from earlier in the video that's how you get rid of that but i'll keep working on this and i'll be back shortly okay we're back and as you can see i've done quite a bit more work on it We've gone around a few dozen more times, and as you can see, we're starting to wrap the lettering around with the band. And that will stay behind with the ring. We're going to remove quite a bit of the center, but that will stay. Now you come to this side here, and you'll see that once you start getting the word liberty bent over, you're probably eventually going to notice, or your eyes might deceive you, and this is going to look like a crack in here. That is not a crack. That is Kennedy's hairline folding over. Let's see if I can get show you that more in the light. But yeah, there is no crack there, but from certain angles, it will look like it's cracking. Don't panic. It's not cracking. Next thing we're going to do is I'm going to show you how to, we're going to start to profile the edge of the ring. Now, if you look here, you'll notice that these edges are quite razor thin. 
so that's going to be no that's going to be not comfortable to wear so i'll show you how to beef that up here right now see we've gone around the card the coin is now work hardened really good so that's the time you want to do this and all we're going to do move this around a bit get a better shot all we're going to do is take and just go all the way around the coin on the edge very lightly if you do this just after annealing you risk folding this in or out doing this this will also help keep the coin straight and keep it from taking on a warble so we'll flip it over and we're going to do the same thing to this side Okay, that's once around on each side of the coin. And you can see we've started to thicken that edge up just by doing that little bit. We started to give it some width or thickness to it. Now, every time you want to do that about at this point, you want to wait till the coin gets, you want to wait till your ring gets a decent enough flange on it here before you start doing this. And what this will do is this will stack more silver into the ring and because you're gonna we're gonna end up removing a big chunk of that center so when we get that done i'm going to carry on here and uh when we get close to sizing well, i'll be back okay we're done hammering now i got this down reduced down to just roughly a size eight just by doing what I showed what was I showed earlier on the video. Get it reduced down. Like I said, the flange is quite wide, and just by tapping the edges down here, we thickened that up to about a millimeter point three. We managed to keep the date. Anything on this inside lip, you'll manage to preserve on the ring. Now what we want to do is stick this this is just a piece of brake line i cut off but that we're going to epoxy that right into the center leave it overnight and then we're going when we that's all stuck together we'll turn it in the drill and we can bevel these edges or profile these edges up as we want them then we'll go ahead and we'll clean out the center shape the inside of the ring uh, stretch it out size it and polish it up and it's done but here's a neat little optical illusion which of those eagles is larger answer is they're the same size
you can see the wingspan. The wings on the coin are folded up a little bit, but no, nope, it looks like you shrink everything on the inside. You don't. The distance from the eye, the center of the eye, to the center of the ear is the same there as it is here. But we're almost done. Hang in there. Patience, 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 and we'll get it finished. Okay, got that all put together. We ended the drill. Now we're just going to hold it up against the bench block here, and we're going to take a regular file, and we're just going to clean up these edges and try to get rid of those hammer marks. So let's do that quick. see we cleaned up the edges profiled a bit still not done still lots of work to do but it's well on its way now next you might want to know how you possibly get that off here's a little trick oops epoxy will break down with heat. So again. Coin's not too hot. You can grab it and this will just come out of here like a putty. But I can't grab it right now. It's too hot. So the next thing we want to do is we want to drill a hole in there. And you can either use a jeweler's saw. 
was a bit of a fine blade. You can usually pick these blades up at hobby shops, really. And you can pick up these saw frames. They're usually fairly cheap, too. They're about 20 bucks for these, just a basic saw frame. But, yeah, we'll drill a hole through there, and I'm going to cut that out with a saw, but you can... If you don't have a saw and don't want to get one, drill a large enough hole and get yourself one of these. That's a chainsaw file. Don't forget to keep your shavings and your filings. Don't let them just spill out onto the floor because it's still silver and you can still use it. See, now we've got a small hole. Like I say, I'm just going to take a jeweler saw and cut that out. As soon as I get that done, we'll start piling up the edges. There you can see it's just been roughly cut out of the center. Now we're just going to get, get out a few different files and we are going to get this center rib knocked down as much as we can. Yeah, it still looks pretty cruddy on the inside, but don't worry, by the time we're all done here, this will all be cleaned up. And here I've just got a, a half round pin file from the hobby store. And then we're just going to clean this inside out here.
I'm going filing a little bit extra in this side here because there's a little bit more buildup in, in this section here. See, as you can see, it will take some time to get this stuff removed in here, but I'd suggest sit down, put a movie on, grab your file, grab a little, grab something to catch the filings, and file away. If you don't care about keeping the silver shavings or anything, you can take a Dremel and like a little grindstone in there and get it exactly like you like it. But with a little bit of patience and a file, again flip, turn the coin over and get it from the other side Nothing else you can use this for glitter for the kids, but that is silver dust. And if you're wondering what that wooden block is that I got, it's that's just a little wooden pin base. Easy to make. You can pick them up on Amazon for two, three bucks, five bucks. But they do come in handy if you're going to make it, you're going to be dealing with small parts. They do come in handy because this thing, they do grip pretty good. There's a set of little leather, little set of leather pads on the inside there that just really grab on. You just slip the back out. Set your piece. Push the wedge into the back. And it'll grab pretty solidly. 
Well, it's pretty solidly in there. <laughs> Now that we've got most of the inside cleaned out, you can still see there's a pretty hefty rib in there, but we'll clean that out. But right now we want to size it. Now there's two ways we can do that. If you have a ring stretcher, great. I happen to have one, but if you don't, you're at least going to need a ring mandrel. Okay, and right now this thing is about a six, about a seven, about a size seven. We gotta get it from size seven down to size eight. So if you don't have a ring stretcher, this is where you're just gonna take your hammer and just keep tapping around and around and around, and that it will eventually get larger and larger until it slips down into there. But when you are hammering on a mandrel, don't forget periodically to take this, and I know you're sick of hearing this, but flip that coin around and go that way because the ring will start to follow the shape of the mandrel and the mandrel is pyramid or cone shaped or tapered. So you every once in a while, every 10 or 15 times around, you know, take and turn it and don't forget to anneal it, which is what we're gonna do right now so I can put it on an actual ring stretcher. I don't want to hammer this no more. And I said when we're annealing, we just go to a nice dull red. After we annealed it, it's all nice and soft again, but it's got a bunch of carbon black on it, but we'll take that off right quick enough. A little bit of sandpaper will actually take most of that off. But right now, I'll just, I'll just get set up with the ring sizer, and I'll show you how that works. Okay, here we have our ring, our ring sizer. Basically, every time you pull this handle up, these segments come apart. This pin drives up and forces these leaves to separate, which stretches the ring. So if you have one of these, you start one side, do one full crank right to the top. Flip the ring over. I know you're sick of hearing that. One full crank. And then we'll check it on the mandrel. See how close we are to our size eight. See, I almost got it there, but almost got it. So seeing as we're almost there, and we've still got that rib in there. We don't need to clean that rib right out of there. That's not really the point. But what we do gotta do is take the sharp edges off of it, so. And I can still feel a few more, so we're just, I'm just gonna file this in here a little bit more, and then I'm gonna check it on the mandrel, and I'm gonna be pretty close by the time I get rid of some more of that rib in there. That should just slide right on to where it needs to be. And I've gone ahead and cleaned this up inside out. And to clean it and get this kind of shine on it, I just used one of these little nail buffing blocks. 
You can see they're numbered. One, and just go all the way around. Three and four, and because I haven't used any polish on this. And as you can see, you can see some of the coin, some of the coin on either side. You can read 1964 there. There we go. That ribs, the center has been cleaned out as much as we can. Now from this point, you're pretty much done. You can keep using this on it, or you can go ahead and use some polish or metal polish. But this is how you do it, and this is how they turn out. And you can see we've done quite a bit with it. It's exactly a size 8 now. And what is the final weight? Look at the old scale over here. So for a size 8 ring, eight point three grams, a little over half the weight, a little over half the weight of the original piece. So that's how it's done. If you made it this far through the video, thanks for watching. I appreciate it. See you again next time.